Hi folks, this is Pastor Fred Tomlinson again. I'm here with another short message from my heart. And this is what the Lord laid on my heart. I want to share it with you. I'm sure many of you that are in the church, especially the uh, Pentecostal church or the Bible-believing church, would be familiar with this. But many that may listen to this may not. So I'm going to preach it the way the Lord gave it to me. The entitlement of my message is nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. We just got through Independence Day just a few days ago. And you know the biggest thing about remembering that day is not the the blasts and the bombs, at least it sounded like them, and the people putting off all their firecrackers, but, but the basics of what Independence Day really means is that we were freed from England, freed to become the United States of America and to build our own independence. And that's what that date represents. And we thank the Lord for it. So we celebrate a day of freedom bought by the blood of thousands of men and women. Yet it reminds us of the price, not only of human suffering, destruction, and shedding of human blood, but most of all, remembering the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that was shed for the remission of our sins. Without that blood, our sins cannot be, under any circumstances, washed away. So what does the blood of Jesus do? First, it cleanses some. In fact, uh, I'd like to read to you, if I could, my text. Uh, let me read my text. Psalm 18, verses 3 through 8. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Now, this is King David running not only from Saul, but from many others. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. That means that I had nothing else I could do but to run to get away. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his holy ears. Then the earth shook and trembled the foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because God was wroth. He was mad over all that sin was doing against his people. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and a fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. May God's blessing be upon his word. Let's get back to uh, our agenda. What does the blood of Jesus really do? First, it cleanses. Now, we're going from the Old Testament. So, the Old Testament speaks just as loudly about Jesus and his redemptive power as the New Testament does. We just need to learn how to read it. 
Psalm 1820. Listen to it. The Lord rewardeth me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. That means I got to be washed. I got to be clean in order for God to work in my life. Secondly, the blood of Jesus sanctifies Psalm 18 and verse 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength. That is that thing that went around their waist and maketh my way perfect as it can be. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Aren't you glad for the sanctifying work of God? You see, sanctification means that it's a progressive work. If you read into the New Testament especially, you'll find that sanctification is spoken of as a progressive work of of holiness. We go from one point, then we go to another, and then to another, and then to another, and that until we hope to achieve that which God has in store for us. But it takes sanctification. Thank God for that. Thirdly, the blood of Jesus empowers. Psalm 18, beginning with verse 28. For thou wilt light my candle. Now, in the Old Testament, the word candle meant our spirit, our soul. So if our candle goes out, then our, our soul goes out and our spirit loses contact with God and becomes dark. So you want to remember that. Listen to it. For thou, for thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. Now, this not only is speaking of the torment that people put Saul and others put King David through. But then David turns around and says these powerful words. Not only have I run through a troop and by my God and him only have I leaped over a wall. Now, what a beautiful picture that is of the torment and the barricade that Satan puts before us. Every time I heard somebody say on the television today, every time I take a step forward, it was the 700 Club. I love listening to that. Every time I make a step forward, it seems like I make a step backwards. Well, that's what Satan tries to do in our Christian experience. He tries to destroy our victory and our ability to move forward. So don't think that some rough times aren't going to come to you because they will. But remember where your strength comes from and how you overcome. The Bible says you overcome by the word of your mouth and the, uh, the faith in your testimony. So keep that in mind. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Now, bucklers back in Bible days were points of the walls of the city that were built to hold the wall up and to strengthen it. 
those were called bucklers. And aren't you glad that Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they are our bucklers. And they keep us. If you can hear me, I can't hear you. Say amen. Because the Lord knows how much we need what that scripture says. For who is God? Save the Lord. Or who is a rock in a weary land? Save our God. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for those wonderful scriptures. My last scripture is found, and it's entitled, this division, The Blood Destroys the Enemy. No way about it. When I get in trouble, mentally, physically, in any other way, especially spiritually, I have to cry out to God because I know the enemy is out to destroy me and to take away my victory. And it's easy for me to sit in this chair over here and, and uh, think about all the bad, all the loneliness, all the other things that sometimes I do face. But instead, when I get up in the morning, I raise my hands and I give praise to God because he is my Lord. He is my victory. He is my healer. He is my keeper. And through him, I have eternal life. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way to explain this. Psalm 19 13 and 14. Keep back, David wrote, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Things that I think about, don't let me do them. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. My last scripture is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. What a powerful scripture this is. It speaks so much, not only of the blood in the Old Testament, but it bridges from the Old Testament to the New. And what a great scripture that is. Hebrews chapter 9, beginning with verse 21. Moreover, he sprinkleth with blood both the tabernacle and the vessels of the ministry. That's speaking of the Old Testament. And also all things are by the law purged with blood. Then it says... And this goes all the way over to the New Testament. Without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. That means sin will not go away. Go away. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be glorified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Then for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of of others, that's goats and, and sheep, and that's in the Old Testament. For then must be often ha, must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now, 
once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, that is, Jesus. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I could shout, and I won't, I promise you. I'm Pentecostal, so I don't do any shouting, but I'm kidding. But I'll tell you, this message brings back to me, and I close with this, the day I was saved at an old-fashioned altar in Fort Ashby, West Virginia. I was 12 years old. My twin brother was 12 because he's my twin. <laughs> and we both, that when the altar call was given, my mother didn't have to drag us. We got up out of our seat and went to the altar and we gave our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ that night. We lived at home, lives of hell, but God took us through it. My son just passed away not long ago. Brother. My brother, I apologize. My brother just passed away not long ago, and I miss him a lot. And I'm just praying and hoping that he's up in heaven talking to Jesus now. That's my prayer. Honestly, that's my prayer. I want to be ready. I hope you do too. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. You see, thank God for our independence. Without that independence, we'd all be on our way to hell. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we've been redeemed by his blood. Thank you for listening today. I want to urge you, if you don't know Jesus, as your personal savior, would you make this short prayer? Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. And Lord, cleanse me with the blood that pastor has preached about and make me ready for heaven. Help me to find a good church, a Bible-believing church, and to grow in the Lord there. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to me this evening. God bless you.